<laughs> hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to another easy home brewing session. Today's brew day for me, and today I'm going to be brewing this boxed beer kit that came from BIY Homebrew Supply. Check them out. Awesome, awesome stuff. Great products. Let's take a look at this baby here. I'll bring this up to the camera for you so you can actually take a look at what we've got. And you can actually pause it if you want and read all this stuff. But there is the information. So it's a chocolate cherry stout. And this is an original recipe that uh, these guys came up with. As a matter of fact, there's a little bit of a story behind why this recipe was created. Why don't we let these guys explain it? Let's take a look. Cheers, everyone. Joe here. And Nikki. Um, I know that you don't usually see a whole lot of me or this little dude, Brewer's Little Helper here. Yeah, uh, Joe and I own and operate our own homebrew supply shop. DIYhomebrewsupply.com. Shameless plug. <laughs> um, that wasn't intended, but uh, we, for the most part, have amazing shoppers. Every once in a while, though, we'll have somebody that comes in and is surprised to see a female running a homebrew store. Um, they usually get over it pretty fast, but. And then every, every, every once in a while, we'll have somebody in who doesn't believe that girls can even brew. And we had one such person in this week uh, after telling me that I needed to have a sex change to even think about becoming a brewmaster, I decided I needed to get in on some of the YouTube action just to prove that girls, power to ya, can be brewers just as much as the next guy, so. Yeah. Girls can brew, guys can brew, guys can make awesome wine, girls can make awesome wine. I mean, it's kind of traditional, you know, you think of a beer brewer as a burly guy with a big beard who's like making all this, you know, booze and stuff, but you know, who's to say a female can't make an awesome beer? In fact, just look at some of the bigger craft breweries out there and you'll be surprised how many are actually female owned or have a female brewmaster. So we are here to dispel that myth today. Uh, Nikki's put together a uh, pretty damn tasty looking recipe if I do say so myself. So it's going to be a cherry chocolate stout uh, named Chocolate Cherry Drink and Be Merry. Why not? It's the season. <laughs> Without further ado, I say let's get brewing. All right, I've actually already looked inside this box, so I know what's in here, but the way they packaged it, actually, I haven't even put it all back in as well as they did, but this is the instructions, of course. You should always read those first, which I have. Set those aside. We got some dry malt extract, some extra light, and some dark. All right, we've got some grains. Mmm, awesome stuff there. Also, we have these which are flaked oats i have never brewed with these before so i'm actually really looking forward to that awesome really good stuff here we've got some chocolate nibs or cocoa nibs Whoa. all right awesome stuff there uh got a little bag for our grains or for, sorry yep yeah, for our grains what's this it's a worm no it's actually a stick of actual vanilla oh it smells good right on all right and some extract from cherry cherry extract and what else is in here oh, of course of course of course our hop additions i'm sure you guys can see those and there's a third one here um what else oh, a little bit of sugar for bottling i'll probably just throw this in anyways because i don't bottle my beers but i'll throw it in we've got our yeast there's that and Last but not least, cans of stuff. It's Muntins, that's good stuff actually. And you get bottle caps too. So there's what's in the box. Excellently packed. And I think we need to brew this beer right now. Right, so what I like to do when I do these kinds of things is, first of all, I've got my pot of three and a half gallons of water on the stove here, getting warmed up on the back burner so you guys can see what I'm doing here. And um, I've, ever, I've read the instructions, which are very clear, and I've laid everything out in the order that it's to go in to the pot. Because after, you know, a little while, and have a couple of these, you, you know, you might lose track of what's going on. So you have to, to pre-plan. So 
I've got uh, my grains here and my grain bag, and while the pot is coming up to temperature, we're gonna bring it up to about 160 degrees. I am following these instructions very closely, actually, because I want this to turn out exactly the way they expect it to. So if I'm using, if I'm not using metric, that just means that that's the way this is all set up. So we got our flaked oats, get those in there. And all these guys. Uh -huh. There you go. I remember the first time I ever did this, I made a huge mess. We want to leave these as loose as possible so that, you know, um, so that they can steep properly. So I'm going to bring this pot over to here. We're going to get this up to about 160, and in these go. All right, I'm following these instructions very closely. And I've got my water to about 165 Fahrenheit. And we're going to go ahead with the burner off and drop in our bag of grains. And um, one of the important things too is to, to grab your spoon and just, you, you guys can sort of see this, I guess, um, and separate the grains so that all of the water can get in between them. So give them a little poke and make sure that all the water gets in between here. And we're gonna let this steep for about 30 minutes. Okay, it already smells amazing. I'm just stoked. I can't wait to taste this beer. It smells so good. Alright, so now it's been about 35 minutes. I've gone down and made myself some star sand. Got a little bit of a thing going on here. I've organized all my stuff. I've got some water for my yeast and I've got my ingredients that I won't be using today. They're going in a little bit later. The vanilla, the chocolate and the cherry flavor. Got my wort chiller all set to go. This is my Mantis wort chiller. This thing rocks. Jadedbrewing.com if you want to know more about that. It's an awesome wort chiller. We'll get that to, the, to that a little bit later. But in the meantime, let's get this off there. I got myself a little colander here. And this is a big bag, so I <clears throat> hope that I can just get it out of here with the spoon. You can see that it's still quite dark, so you really, you know, you want to keep this draining off until you get all this goodness out of here. There you go. Now we can let that sit for a few minutes, but in the meantime, no problem with letting, getting the heat turned on, start to bring this up to a boil because that's the next step and add some, uh, some of the malt. Now the thing, and, and of course some hops, the thing I like about their instructions, they tell you not to add all of the malt at the beginning of the boil. And the reason for that is we're only doing a three and a half gallon, three gallon mini boil. And if you add all of the malt at the beginning of that, you might have some problems with your hop utilization because it's such a high gravity solution. <clears throat> so they make it a point in this, these instructions uh, to make sure that you add the rest of the malt, like basically the other half of the malt at the end of the boil. So you get better hop util utilization. And I appreciate that because I do that all the time. Even if the instructions don't say it, I do that. And so that's good advice from these guys. All right, so yes, we have a boil. So what we're gonna do is we're going to start our additions. The first thing we've got, and I'm gonna turn off my burner, very important, and grab our light liquid malt extract. I like to add the dry malt first because it dissolves easier. Just a habit of mine, that's all. So, there we go. Let's get that in there.
beautiful. You can see how the steam really, yeah, it, it's so sticky, this stuff. You gotta be kind of careful, but that worked out well. There we go. Perfect, that's gone in very nicely. And now the liquid malt, which the lid has gone down. There we go. Let's get that in there. I didn't heat up the cans. I mean, it's easier if you do it, but it's not necessary because you can always just rinse out the cans with hot water um, when you're done. Okay. So I got most of that out of there. I'm just going to give it a good stir to get it all up off, off, up off the bottom. Like so. At which point we can go ahead and resume our boil. And bring it back to the boil and then our first hop addition will occur. And I'll rinse this can out and get all the goodness out of it. And the main thing now is, is that you've got to bring it back to the boil and keep an eye on it. Do not walk away from the stove at this point because you could have a boil over and that would be bad. So we're keeping an eye on this. As soon as she comes back to a boil, we're going to get what's called a hot break and we'll just manage that the best we can. Once that calms down, we got our first hop addition, which is a East Kent Goldings and I believe it's one ounce. My wife came running downstairs and she thought I was baking cookies. <laughs> so, and she said, oh, I thought there was food. And it's now it's beer, honey. Wait till you taste it. All right, we have reached our boil and I don't think we're gonna get much of a hot break. What I found is that if you, well, yeah, we've got a little bit of one here. Just gonna turn the heat down a bit. I'm very happy with the way that's looking. And I'm gonna add my first hop addition, which is East Kent, uh, sorry, UK East Kent Goldings. There you have it. All right. And I believe it's one ounce. And I've got a good rolling boil going on. So in goes our first hop edition. And I'm going to look at the time. 7.56. Give that a small stir. And that is good to go for 30 minutes. Um, in 30 minutes, we're going to add more hops. And more time will pass. And then... Other fermentables will be added. So I, in the meantime, can go and get myself a fresh homebrew because I'm out. And I'll see you guys back here in a, in a bit. Cheers. Hey, welcome back. And it's been about 30 minutes. So we're going to go in with our next top edition, which is our MT Hood. I don't know if that's how you pronounce that. Now these are added at the 30 minute mark and they boil for 20 minutes. So now I have another 20 minutes to kill. Anyway, we'll give this another 20 minutes. I go down and sanitize my fill hose and um, we'll be back. Cheers, 17. Okay. So now what we do is we turn off the burner. It's an electric stove, so you want to let the burner cool off um, before you add any more malt to this. And while that's happening, you can sample one of your previous home brews. And so what I'm going to do first is now this sugar is for bottling. Um, I don't bottle my beer, so I'm just going to add it anyway. It will slightly increase, I mean slightly, the alcohol content. And you would have, whoops, oh cripe. <laughs> you would have added it anyway to the bottles, so why not add it to the beer if you're just going to keg the beer? I just made a hell of a mess. Hang on. So you're going to lose your boil during this procedure. We're going to add, again, first our dry malt extract. This is a darker dry malt. Let's 
stir that in. Again, the heat is off. It's gone yet again darker. There we are. All right, and then our last malt addition is a extra light. I don't know whether I was supposed to add the light first or the extra light first, whatever. I can't remember which one was which, but I'm pretty sure I got it right. So we'll throw this in there. So, you know, pretty simple here. Pretty basic stuff. Let's see if we can get that out of there quicker. See, now what we've got is a super concentrated uh, wort. And this is what you probably wouldn't want for your entire boil because if it's, you know, a, only a smaller amount of water, like a small boil, like a three and a half gallon boil, um, you don't want to add all of them all at the beginning. You can, and you, you know, you won't hurt the beer, but to get the most out of the hops, You want to keep your boil gravity down to a normal amount and add the extra malts at the end like we just did. So let's get this back up to a boil so we can resume and add our last hop addition. In the meantime, I'll rinse this out, add it back in, back up to the boil, final hop addition, and I've got my fermenter down there ready to accept the wort. Of course, my wort chiller is all ready to go too. And I got to put that in as well to sanitize it. So near the end of the boil, got to get things timed up. Got my yeast um, ready to go into this little thing here so I can rehydrate it. So we'll be back. A and B roll. Ah, uh, hot break. Ah, second hot break. Okay, that's okay. Take it off the heat. <laughs> Just when I turned around to switch on the camera. Okay. So we have to let that dissipate real quick. That's okay. There we go. See, there you have it. Yeah. All right, so we're back to the boil. We're gonna restart our clock. This is basically a 70 minute boil, really is what it is. It takes that long to, to let things come down back up to the boil. And our last hop addition is once again, an empty hood, one ounce. Bam. You go 10 minutes until flame out. So what we need to do now is grab our wart chiller. Insert wart chiller. This wart chiller, by the way, before I put it in, listen, it's called a mantis. I've been using this thing for a few months now and I absolutely love it for stovetop brewing. Um, it's so efficient, it does everything right. It controls the flow of water through it. It has a double layer of um, piping there. You saw the construction of it. I talked about this in, in another video and I'm so glad to have this because it really does help. Um, there's tricks you can use, like you can run hot water through it before you put it in to the pot. That way you don't lose your boil like I just did. Um, not too concerned about that. We're at about 110 degrees anyway. So if you're a stovetop brewer like myself, um, you know, it's it's a low profile wort chiller uh, with as much power as a full size one. This thing gets your beer down to temperature in about seven minutes. I actually timed it. It's jadedbrewing.com and I love their work. Wort chillers is their specialty and they really do custom design these things. They do a lot of research. They do a lot of um, mathematics, figuring out thicknesses of pipes, length of pipes, pressure of water, what's the most efficient sweet spot there is to chill your wort, um, depending on what situation you're in. In this case, we're in a kitchen with tap water. So, you know, it's different than when you're outside with the uh, hose. Um, and that's what this is designed for. It's designed for kitchen brewing. And although you, I'm not saying you couldn't use it for outside brewing, but for me, it's perfect. I'm gonna hook this up, give this 10 minutes, and we're gonna flame out.
another beer is in the can. Awesome stuff. So I did take a hydrometer reading this time. We had approximately 1.070. 1.070. So 1070. Pretty good. Could have been 7, 10, 1072. I'm not quite sure. But it was definitely a good 1070. Let's give this a try. Oh yeah. A little hot particulate there. Nice and sweet. This is going to be good. It's going to be good. So um, we're going to let that ferment for a week. We'll come back when it's time to do a secondary and we'll show you what we're going to do with all this stuff. Hey guys, I want to thank you so much for watching. Before I go, I just want to let you know, give you an update. Four days after I put the vanilla bean in that uh, beer, I kegged it and I added the cherry extract flavor to it. So it's now sitting in refrigeration and in a very short time, there'll be a video coming out me tasting that beer. And when it does, I'll post a link down below for that. In the meantime, thanks so much for watching and I want to give a special thanks to Joe and Nikki BIY Home Brew Supply. I don't have that shirt on today, but I'll be wearing it during the tasting of that beer. And just thank those guys for such a wonderful product and uh, being great people. And uh, check out their website, BIYHomebrewSupply.com. Thumb up if you like the video, subscribe, comment, the whole bit. Thanks a lot for watching, guys, and I will see you very soon. 17. For the brew, stay for the crew.